The story is not fascinating at all, um, but it's the opportunity to create um, a very contrasted work. It means that uh, the whole thing about um, this uh, religious um, ceremony, after that the attack of the, the, the pirates, um, the bad guys, um, the lovers, it's really uh, a great opportunity to uh, express music which are really um, versatile and really uh, full of color, etc. But I would say that um, the story is maybe the less interesting thing of the ballet. I have a memory uh, regarding the story. When I was a young conductor, I was assistant with the London Symphony Orchestra and came Pierre Boulez conducting Daphne St. Louis, the whole ballet. And uh, at some point I said to him, um, but uh, cher maître, why uh, don't you ever in your work refer to the story of Daphne? And he said to me, if they want to read it, they can read it. For me, it is not so interesting and exciting. And I have to say that I agree totally. And also uh, this story full of actions or full of very steady moments where you can uh, build an amazing music. And for sure, to imagine how the ballet could be on the stage of the Théâtre du Châtelet. Before starting to rehearse Daphne et Chloé, um, I knew, and it's quite famous in the musician's world, that there were loads of mistakes in the parts. So we decided, with many musicians from the orchestra, to um, clean the parts. So um, we took a list of erratum and we made a brand new set of parts. So we are very glad that um, now the people can listen to um, Daphne et Chloé without all these small mistakes, which sometimes were very big, I have to say. We try every time to go back to the original parts, the original everything, the instruments, etc., how the piece was performed, and the music, for sure, had to be clean. So we are very proud also of making this, this work for the parts. Unfortunately for his plan, the music survived alone, without the dance. And it was for, for Diaghilev a really tragedy. He couldn't understand that. And it was uh, uh, actually a fight between him and Stravinsky, especially for the Sacre du Printemps, because he was not happy at all that the music could be performed without the dance. So with Daphne et Chloé by Maurice Ravel, it's a little bit the same. You can um, appreciate the music you can experiment the music without a visual counterpoint, the ballet. You don't need to see specifically the dance, so you can experiment, listen to the music alone, and it works magically. Ravel is the man of the orchestra, He's very known for being such an orchestrator and such um, a scientist of the orchestra. Um, what is uh, for sure something he did only with Daphne et Chloé is the choir. What is a symphonic choir with a big orchestra telling absolutely no story at all but just making ah, uh, no indication for the choir, only notes 
and dynamics. So he really uses the choir as an instrument. And also the way that Ravel um, decided to put geographically the choir is something very special. He indicates the, 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 the position of the choir, which is backstage, a little bit closer, much closer, in front, etc. And we did that also in the recording. We tried to, um, to do the exact indications of Maurice Ravel regarding the distance. And the Aides uh, choir is a remarkable group. So when we started to, to perform all these uh, ballet russe works, um, my initial idea was really to go back 100 years after the premieres, to go back to this, um, first of all, these programs, what amazing richness in the programs, um, and also to go back to the original colors because we all know when we are interested in the instruments we all know that um, after the second world war started a kind of globalization of all the instruments in the world and in paris we had amazing orchestras i would say that uh, when i read all the letters uh, starting with wagner until so many great musicians, we can, we can have an idea of how the French orchestra uh, were at the time. I think it was one of the best periods for the French orchestras at the time. <coughs> and so Diaghilev did collaborate with these French orchestras for Les Ballets Russes. And when we started to uh, rediscover these instruments, First of all, we were also fascinated by the instruments. When you look at a trombone, when you look at what was a flute at the time, an oboe, a tuba, my God, it is so far from what we know today. So for example, a tuba at the time of, uh, of uh, Ravel would be big like that. Today it's more than three times the same. Uh, bigger than the tuba, um, and, and so on. How was the sound of all the strings uh, section with the gut strings? How was the, the, how were the harps in the orchestra, the percussion, etc. So with Les Siècles, we really rediscovered all this fascinating orchestra, and our first experience was with Stravinsky. So we started to rediscover this magic world of sounds. And then suddenly, when we started with Ravel, Daphne et Chloé, I thought, OK, I know how it sounds with, uh, with Stravinsky, a bit with Debussy, but with Ravel, let's see how, how it works. And suddenly, we uh, discovered, I think, a whole um, new aspect of this music. It's a very sensual music for sure, but suddenly with the period instruments, you had the experience of a magicness in the sound itself. So I think that uh, it was for us and for the audience when we played in concert, something like a shock, this music with hundred musicians on stage can sound like something so sweet or so soft or so round. And also in, in the dynamic passages or very loud passages with such accurate articulation. The combinations of instruments are so specific and so new that when you write, when you use the right tools, suddenly you, uh, you can taste the exact effect that the composer wanted to create. It's like cooking. When you, when you use the right elements, makes the food amazing.
When we look at the whole production and the whole premieres um, in this amazing adventure of Les Ballets Russes, it's um, fascinating to see how um, every composer wanted in a certain way, I think, through music and dance to compete. Um, and for sure, one of the very first success, amazing, huge success of Les Ballets Russes uh, was The Firebird, Oiseau de Feu by Igor Stravinsky. And I think this work did stimulate all these amazing composers for sure, the, the subject, Daphne et Chloé from the antique, um, and all this tradition that we have in France of um, ballet, opera, um, ballet lyrique with Jean-Philippe Rameau, or this comedy uh, with uh, dance with Jean-Baptiste Lully, and, and later on Gluck, and also in a certain way in Berlioz, you have a tradition of how the dance, the ballet with the music is combined. So this is also um, certainly uh, thought by Ravel himself that he's achieving um, a kind of um, apotheose from this French tradition of ballet music. <laughs>